Welcome back to Columbia Bay Airsoft's channel. Uh, today I am filming at home because we are in a lockdown so I won't be heading to range. But nevertheless, I have something very exciting with me, which is the new Arutec uh, M-Pass nozzles for VGHAK. These just came in from Taiwan a few hours ago uh, at my doorstep. And for those that are already familiar with the M-Pass, uh, it is a adjustable nozzle valve system that allows you to change how much and all, uh, how much gas goes into propulsion of VBs or more into the cycling of the uh, bo uh, bolt BCG because you're able to adjust the cutoff of the, cy uh, the cycling action of the GBB itself. And here I have me three types of the n pass for the GHKAK which is type 1, type 2, and 3. But basically what it is is that type 1 is a nozzle only. If you have a spare key you just need to order extra nozzles so that's out of the way. Type 2 is a regular M-Pass, is an M-Pass with a regular wrench tool and Type 3 is the M-Pass with a rotating key which allows you to adjust the M-Pass through the breech of your rifle without having to strip your rifle. Uh, without further ado, I am just gonna talk about why you even need the M-Pass. Well, basically, if you've ever worked with GHK AKs and have a whole bunch of nozzles of you like I have here, these are, I believe, well, these are high powers and these are regular powers and I have another high power here, which are basically junk. Uh, why I say that? Because in those two nozzles, uh, high power, standard power, or one joule power, no two nozzles are the same. So you can have a regular one joule, uh, 1.5 joule nozzle, standard nozzle, and it could shoot anywhere between 1.2 to 1.8 joules because of how terri bad, uh, terrible GHK, uh, GHK QC is. And well, the reason why there's such a huge uh, vari uh, variation in the power of these nozzles is because, well, the nozzle spring itself, GHK used some pretty shit springs and that's that's the only reason, basically. Um, these are the same nozzles, these are all high powers, but I have tried different AKs, uh, different Friends as AKs, they can shoot anywhere between 1.2 and all the way up to 1.8, depending on the configuration. And that's that is just inconsistent, which is one thing. Uh, second of all, is that the original nozzle has two O rings, which I replaced one of them. Uh, the original gray ring is unfortunately oversized from factory, if you already know. Uh, if you run a regular BCG or the Hafisa Steel BCG, this is oversized. And so you don't get a smooth action when you're trying to. When you try to uh, when you cycle the bolt, or you try to manually pull the nozzle out, uh, I s presume this is done so that it gets a better air seal. But it's also pretty redundant because, as some of you already know, or you've noticed, is that the piston head face of the GHK nozzle is perforated. So basically, the idea is that when the nozzle, or rather, when the uh, when the rifle cycles. The nozzle expands, expands, and the gas is expanding into these perforations and expanding the O-ring to seal against the nozzle. So in theory, it doesn't need a oversized O-ring. So that's one 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 big design issue, or I believe is a design issue with the JK nozzles. And second of all, this inner O-ring usually is a black one. Uh, it's pr it's basically redundant. It's absolutely redundant because the original O-ring is smaller than it needs to be and does nothing at all. It does not seal against the BCG at all. And so here we have a... Well, I'll just open this up since this is mine. Uh, this is a Type 3 well, impasse with the rotating key. I'll just give you a quick comparison because... All right, so you see the this is the M pass nozzle from uh, RE Tech, the magnetic lock locking nozzle. You can see that RE Tech has done away with the inner O ring and have only one O ring left, and oh, it is quite loose. But here we see the six perforations on the piston head face, so it's supposed to expand the same way as the original nozzle, original nozzle design. And uh, unfortunately, I believe this is a sealed unit over an opinion. I believe I can punch this out and just replace the spring should I ever need to, which I do not hope to, but the advantage of this over the original GHK nozzle is that if this spring is 
kind of wonky in this one, you can uh, you can adjust the end pass so that you get the power you need. And well, right now I'm not going to do that because I am going to test the power of this nozzle out of the box to see the maximum power I can get. So uh, for reference, I'm going to install into my uh, 70U build, and this here is currently doing 1.3 joules with 12 kilogram propane, uh, well, surgeon or ex-surgeon gas, uh, red wolf gas, so 12 kilograms. And it's shooting out a uh, old gen, the old gen alpha plus, A plus, sorry, A plus uh, inner chamber group, which is 210, 220 millimeters length total. So this is doing 1.3 joules solid, uh, ambient temperature indoors, 20 degrees. So I'm going to see what power I'm getting out of this and how low I can adjust it to. But um, the reason for using NPAS over the regular nozzles, other than the fact that these nozzles are inconsistent, is because, well, with the JHA-AK, this is pretty difficult. The Krenkov 74U specifically, it's very difficult to tune it to, uh, to field limits, which is indoor field limits in Hong Kong is 1.3 joules dead. Right now, ambient temperature is 1. Uh, 20 degrees and it's already doing 1.3. So if I were to take this down on a summer day or 25 degrees, this will go over overpower. So uh, you want the end pass so you can adjust the power precisely to the levels you need, or at least you can readjust it on the fly if it goes over. And all the issues of the 24U is that it's pretty difficult to get it to the precise power you need for indoor limits because with the standard or the low power nozzle, uh, if it does one joule, it actually fluctuates a lot. The 74U, the Krinkoff specifically, is not efficient running very low power, uh, low power configurations. So this, hopefully, I can do 1.2 joules. Right now it's at 1.3, so I'm just going to see if we can get it down 1.2. And how consistent that power is. Be right back while I grab my uh, flathead. And I'm gonna strip my AK right here. So right, so this is the Hephaestus Steel BCG uh, and a attack technology piston. Don't ask where I get this because it's a long discontinued product. I just use it because I have one and it's great. Um, so the current nozzle. Uh, like most of the other ones I have, I have the original rear O-ring and an inner O-ring which I've replaced with FK1, FKM O-ring. So I'm just going to remove that and reinstall the end pass. Yet. Now before I remove that fully, let's just see how it glides in. So this is pretty, it's not bad at all. I can't do exactly if thumb seal because that's how it is. Every GHK AK BCG is just made different. Doesn't seal perfectly, but it shouldn't because when it expands, it should expand against that O-ring and so, uh, inside those perforations. So let's see piston. Ooh, it's quite dry. So let's see. Where's my... I'll leave that a bit. In you go, let's see. Oof. Ooh, that's a very, very tight fit, but uh Aritech has used a oversized oversized O-ring as well, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to see how that goes. Uh, I don't know. the end pass installed. Unfortunately, it doesn't seal as well as my rear nozzle because, yep. Okay, so maybe the O-ring is not oversized after all, but it is not that smooth, so we'll have to see. Right, side. Just 
Can I reinstall that? Oh. Right, so now we're just gonna test this. This is the end pass as it is from factory. Not sure what power you're shooting. Uh, so running 0.28 and 12 kilogram surgeon gas, exurgeon gas. And let's see what we're getting out of this. So here we go. One point five six, one point five two, one point four nine, one point four nine, one point five two. Okay, so it's a quite stable. And right now, I am gonna adjust the end pass to see how low we can get. Try again. One point oh eight, one point oh eight, one point oh four stable. One point oh eight, very very stable. Uh, I've adjusted way too much, so I'm going to try to get one point two joule here. Okay, guys, I'm back, uh, and I've been adjusting the end pass nozzle quite a bit, and I realized something is that, um, unfortunately, the adjustment is not very linear at all. So uh, it takes around ten turns to get it down from one point. 58 the full full power setting all the way down to 1.1 which is why I have right here and unfortunately I actually kind of hit 1.2 um when it goes all the way down to 1.2 um one click one counterclockwise turn of the end pass drops the joules by an entire 0.1 so I actually can't hit the power setting I want so Okay, so maybe I have hit 1.27 right here. Uh, I'm going to fire a few more. If you can see that. Ow. And I'm out. So as you can see, it's actually shooting very, very stable 1.3 at this setting, but unfortunately, it is overpowered for indoors. So what I suggest doing is that right now I'm running 0.28. What you want to do to hit 1.2 joule is actually to tone it. So from 1.3 to 1.1, you want to you want to drop it down 1.1 joules, and then you want to bump it back up by joule creep using 0.3. 0.3 gram BDs. So, unfortunately, I have not been able to get these power settings I want, but I have illustrated that it is actually very, very stable. The power here is holding 1.3 joule dead, or well, plus or minus uh, 0.05 of joule. Very, very stable. So that's that's it for the initial testing. See you back at bench. So I'm back on my bench. Uh, so we've we've shown that um, the end pass nozzle is actually very very stable when adjusted in, uh, when dialed in. But unfortunately, there's still that uh, void around one joule to 1.3 joule, which you can't get a very precise adjustment. Um, I don't believe it was, it's a fault of um, RE Tech because the principle of the end pass nozzle is very simple. It's a adjustable length nozzle uh, nozzle valve. And all it does is ex extends or retracts the length of that nozzle. So the non-linear uh, adjustment level of the power around 1.2 joule, I don't believe is a fault of Aritech. It's just a limitation of the gas system, GHK AK gas system. So unfortunately, well, what this does probably help is that if, if you have a barrel configuration that is so, uh, that's slightly longer, 
you can adjust it to the 1.1 setting I have on my rifle to around 1.2 joules to get the power you need. But as it stands, um, I might be better off just running the regular nozzle or just using a dual creep method. But uh, right now I am going to show you how to actually adjust to the nozzle using the rotating key because it is actually possible, but it takes a bit of effort. So take the rifle, put it into uh, semi or full, pull the bolt down, and you do not want to pull the nozzle up. You just want to hold your BCG down like this, and you want to guide your rotating key in until you reach that nozzle. And here you go, it's uh, latched onto the end pass nozzle itself. And I'm not going to rotate this because right now I have the correct power setting. I'm not going to do that, but you can turn it. Uh, using this key, actually I'll just do it anyways. So clockwise, you can hear click. Clockwise. Clockwise, three clicks clockwise. And I'm just gonna revert that. So counterclockwise, just opposite. One click, two clicks, three clicks. Yep. There you go. And when you're done, just pull it upwards. No fuel, fuel stripping needed. There you go. And that's the end pass nozzle. And thank you for watching.